going to make a birch bark style at the Baskin birch bark basket. And this one is actually made out of paper that we Xerox uh, uh, birch bark onto. So here's the outside of the bark and the inside of the bark on this style basket. And the finished product looks a lot like a basket that's in the collection of the Alaska State Museum. So let's figure out how we're going to do this uh, basket. And the first thing, um, and we've placed these online so you could print off this basket design and you'd have to print both the front and back to do that. But we're going to cut it out first. And so how we cut the, out the basket is we're going to follow along this black outer line around the edge of the basket. It's actually folded this paper basket in a very similar way that the basket, the original basket, um, is folded in the collection. to keep these little pieces. It has my instructions on here. So here's step one, cutting out and folding the basket, and then step two, how to make the rigid rim on the basket, which the rigid rim is made out of uh, spruce root and spruce root lashing. Sometimes willow was also used or alder. And the inside of the basket also might have a decorative reinforced piece of spruce root or willow branch or alder on it. But first we're going to fold this up and the way that you do that is uh, you'll notice there's a very faint little line here, that little rectangle. I didn't want it to show up in my final basket. But if you gently fold along those lines, just a, a little bit, it starts to give you kind of a bowl shape. Just, just lightly fold it. Uh, you're just kind of bending the paper more than anything else. So it's just got those bends in it. Then at those cross bends, you'll notice some dotted lines in a center um, dark line. And really, we're folding those dotted lines up together and along that center line like that. A little bit tricky. A little bit tricky. But we're folding to the outside of the bowl like this and to make a flap. And you take that flap and you'll notice that this basket has long sides and short sides. You want the flap to fold to the long side. So we're folding that flap over to the long side. I'll repeat that on this side so you can see that again. Folding, kind of gently folding down that center seam like that. Bringing those together, creasing that really tightly. And then this is my long side, this is my short side, so I want that flap that I've created here to bend to the long side of the basket. So I've got two, two of those sides bended. Again, I'm coming over to this one, finding that center line, kind of bending along that center line till those dotted lines come together. And then i got to find, here's my short side and here's my long side, so I want that tab to turn to the long side. And i got my last edge. And bend down the center seam. Crease that really nicely. And then I'm going to fold. Make sure my dotted lines don't show. Fold that. Go right back over that with my thumbnail, kind of make sure it's nice and tight. So it's almost held together all on its own um, in that bowl shape. Now I'm going to take a stapler and staple these corners like this. It's really simple. Make sure you're through all the layers. Can you see that pretty well? Just like that. shape. 
But what really makes this bowl special is to add in this nice rim on, on there. And in this case, I used a product called, uh, it's a craft twisty paper. Craft twist is called. This is just paper. But you could use, if you didn't have uh, paper, you certainly could use cord, cotton cord, or um, even chenille stems or pipe cleaners would work for this, for this method. So I need to know that I have enough. So I'm just going to kind of um, wrap it around my basket like this. So I have a little extra here and then cut that off. I have enough again. Certainly have more than enough there. Then I'm also using this is a cotton cord. Um, it's waxed cotton, so it's a little bit stiff, you know. But it, but it also makes a great needle. So I need about twice as much of the black cord as I had in the twisty paper. So I'm going to use this as my measure gauge here. So let's see, I have double that amount. Side. So I've got my twisty paper and my spruce suit lashing. The spruce suit lashing, to go through, you notice that I put these dots on here. And these dots are, are go we're going to punch those out as holes. And you can use either a big darning needle to punch holes, or I have a handy hole punch. And this hole punch is an eighth inch hole punch. So it's kind of a nice size for what I'm doing. And I'm going to um, punch out each hole. Let's see if you can see that. So I'll put the hole maker right in there. And if you see from the side, it's punching out those holes. Like that. Get it in there. Punch them out. punched out those holes all the way around and I'm ready to start sewing. Now with this, I'm going to turn this tip into a needle because even though it's waxed, it still has a tendency to fray a little bit. And the way that I can do that is take a piece of tape and put it on the end like this so that it's halfway up or halfway down the, the cord and then it just tapes on itself. And you wrap it around real tightly. So wrap it around like so. Wrap that around and wrap it around. It's more than enough tape, I'm sure. Made that needle. And now I'm going to take one end of this cord and on the short end, one of the short ends, I'm going to tape this in place to, for starting. I've got to cut that piece of tape there. And I want to tape it right in between the holes my tape over just a little too far, so I'm going to try and move it here. Here we go. Let's tape that cord in place so it doesn't move on us. So, got it there. And then I am going to start um, by running my my string 
and presents a screw suit lashing come out underneath this. Oh, no, that came off. So you want to leave a tail, a long tail, right like that. And I'm going to tape this tail, too, so that I don't pull it through as I sew. I did this by taping these, this long tail and this, and running this through. Now I have to bring my long string around the spruce root lashing here and through the hole from the inside to the outside, like this. And I'm going to pull it all carefully. Pull it tight. And then I bring this around again, around the twisty paper, and through from the inside to the outside. You're sewing a whip stitch on here is basically what you're doing. Okay, and then I just move my twisty paper along. Again, there's the next hole. So I'm going to go from the inside. The outside. And I think you saw that. You might have noticed my piece of tape came loose off the end at one point, so I had to wrap a new piece of tape and make a new needle. That's an important part so it doesn't fray. It makes this whole job a lot easier. So you whip around from the inside. Okay. up on us so you have to take your time and go around and under that piece of cord. I don't want to get a knot in it either. Kind of keep this out of your way. Come around through the hole. Pretty good there. Okay, I'm going to go around again. This around again. This This reinforces the edge. The spruce root, if this were a real basket, this would be spruce root lashing. And then the spruce root lashing might be dyed um, a specific color. And go around. The birch bark for baskets is gathered in the springtime around June when the sap is flowing through the trees. And as it flows through the trees, it loosens that bark layer, so it comes off easily. And you can go up, you find a tree that doesn't have a, a lot of knots or branches in it, so that you have nice pieces of bark. And, and you um, then cut down maybe three or four feet along the longitudinal line of the trunk and peel off the bark. Um, and you can just store it anywhere. The Athabascans might store it in their bunk or their smokehouse um, or their cache for a while until they're ready to make a basket. And then when they're ready to make the basket, they have to either heat that bark over the fire or um, soak it in hot water. And then it becomes very bendable or pliable to, to bend it and fold it in these shapes. Now you see that I've come to the end here, and that's where I began. And I want to finish this off. First I need to cut that to exact length. And see, I didn't have a lot extra, that's, but that's perfect. I had enough extra 
to finish it off. And, and then I'm going to take this long end that I had here and just make a nice little twist in it. Just, you know, twist it over itself, make a knot like that. Finish it. And then I'm going to do a little extra by um, running this down here behind. Maybe I'll come up from the bottom, it won't show so much. I'm going to run this behind between the paper and the edge. And then I can just trim that extra cord off. Like that. Put that aside. And over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to run that in between the edge and the paper, like that. It just finishes it off a little bit. Cut off the extra. And we've completed a beautiful birch bark bowl, birch bark tray in an Athabascan style design.